This is a story from the land of Nod. Hi, my name is Annie and I create everything that you see and hear here at Land of Nod. Each week I retell a wonderful children's story that has been specially chosen to reflect a unique place, country, culture or people. These are not your average fairy tales, they are stories from all of us because we all have a story to tell. If you would like to listen to one more special story each week and completely ad free, please sign up at patreon.com forward slash land of nod, where you can also get a special discount of my first kids book, Leave Some Sea for Me. And now, who's ready for a story? The Lute Player Once upon a time, a king and queen lived quite happily in their small kingdom. The king held tournaments and practiced mock battles with his knights. But after a time, he grew bored and restless. He longed to go out into the world to try his skill in real battle and to win fame and glory. So he called his band of armed knights together and gave orders to start for a distant country where lived a cruel king who raided the countries all around him. The queen who had always shared the duties of the kingdom, was now given full power to rule in his absence. He commanded his ministers to assist the queen in all things. Then, taking tender leave of his wife, the king set out with his small force. After a time, the king reached the lands of the foreign ruler. He rode on until he came to a mountain pass where a large army lay in wait for him. His force was defeated. The king himself was taken prisoner. He was carried off to the prison where the captives suffered badly. The prisoners were kept chained all night long and in the morning they were yoked together like oxen to plough the land until it grew dark. In the meantime, the queen governed the land wisely and well. The country remained at peace with its neighbours and her subjects prospered. But when one year became two, and then two became three, the queen grieved at her husband's long absence. Since no word was received from him, she feared he had been killed in battle. When at last the poor king was able to send her a message, her grief turned to joy. The letter told of his capture and gave instructions for his rescue. Sell our castles and estates and borrow money to raise as large a fortune as you can. Either bring or send the gold ransom to me, for that is the only hope of deliverance from this terrible prison. The Queen pondered the message. She was resolved to obtain his release as quickly as possible, but to raise so large a sum would take months. Then if I bring the ransom gold myself, she thought, This foreign king might seize the gold and imprison me too. If I send messengers with the ransom, whom shall I trust? It is a long distance to travel with a cart full of gold. And what then if the ransom offer is refused? This ruthless king may not want to ransom a prisoner, or he may be so wealthy he will laugh at our gold. The queen paced her chamber in despair. If I do as the king requests, He would return home beggared and in debt. The country would be impoverished. These thoughts filled her mind until she was nearly distracted. At last, an idea came to her. She would journey to the distant land herself as a travelling minstrel, a lute player, and she would rescue the king herself. She cut her long brown hair and dressed herself as a minstrel boy. Then she took her lute and leaving word that she was going on a journey, she left the castle at night. She did not know if her bold plan would succeed, but she knew the ministers would be horrified and detain her if they could. At first the queen rode alone, but soon she joined a party of pilgrims journeying her way. Later she joined a group of merchants and players. The young minstrel who played the lute so well and sang so gaily was welcome company the travellers. In this way she neared her destination in a little more than a month. 
Leaving the party of merchants, she headed for the steep mountain pass and the country where her husband was imprisoned. She had become so thin from lack of food and so tanned by the sun and the bright colours of her minstrel cloak were dusty and worn. When at last she arrived at the palace of the foreign king, she walked all round it and at the back she saw the prison. Then she went into the great court in front of the palace. Taking her lute in her hands, she began to play so artfully that those who heard her felt as though they could never hear enough. After she had played for some time, she began to sing and her voice was sweeter than a nightingale's. I come from my own country far into this foreign land. Of all I own, I take alone my sweet lute in my hand. Oh, who will thank me for my song? Reward my simple play. Like lover's sighs, it still shall rise to greet thee day by day. My song begs for your pity and gifts from out your store. And as I play my gentle tune, I linger near your door. And if you hear my singing within your palace, sire, oh, give, I pray, this happy day to me, my heart's desire. No sooner had the king heard this touching song, sung by such a lovely voice, than he had the singer brought before him. Welcome, lute player, said he. Where do you come from? My country, sire, is far away across many lands. I wander from country to country, and I earn my living with my music. Stay here then a few days, and when you wish to leave... I will give you as reward what you have asked for in your song, your heart's very own desire. So the lute player stayed on in the palace and played and sang songs, both merry and sad. The king, who was charmed and beguiled by the songs and the music, never tired of listening and almost forgot to eat or drink. After three days, the lute player came to take leave of the king. Well, said the king, What do you desire as your reward? Sire, give me one of your prisoners. You have so many in your prison, and I would be glad of a companion on my journey. When I hear his happy voice as I travel along, I shall think of you and thank you. Well, come along then, said the king. Choose whomever you wish. And he took the lute player through the prison himself. The queen walked out among the prisoners and at length she picked her own husband and took him with her on her journey home. Again they travelled the roads with parties of pilgrims and traders and the king never suspected that this small, thin, tanned minstrel who entertained the travellers could actually be his queen. At last they reached the border of their own country Let me go now, kind lad, said her companion. I am no common prisoner but the king of this country. Let me go free and ask what you will as your reward. Do not speak of reward, answered the lute player, and go in peace. Then come with me, my friend, and you shall be my guest. When the proper time comes, I shall be at your palace, said the minstrel. And so they parted. Now the queen took a shorter way home, arriving at the castle before the king. She changed her clothes, putting on her most splendid gown and a high silk headdress. An hour later, all the people in the castle were running to the courtyard crying, Our king has come back! After three long years, our king has come home! The king greeted everyone kindly. But to his queen he said reproachfully, Did you not receive my message? I laid a long time in prison waiting to be ransomed. Now you greet me lovingly. But it was a young lute player who rescued me and brought me home. The queen had expected to tell the king in the privacy of their chamber the reasons for her disguise and the perilous journey. For she feared he would be angry that she had not sent the money. But before she could make a suitable reply, a spiteful young minister standing nearby said, Sire, 
When news of your imprisonment arrived, the queen left the castle and only returned today. At this, the king looked stricken and sorrowful. He turned away to confer with his ministers, for he thought the queen had deserted him in his time of need. The queen returned to her chamber and put on again her travel-stained minstrel cloak and hood. Taking her lute, she slipped down to the castle courtyard, where she sang in a sweet, clear voice the verses she had sung in a far-off land. I sing the captive's longing within his prison wall of hearts that sigh when none are nigh to answer to their call. And if you hear my singing within your palace, sire, O give, I pray, this happy day to me, my heart's desire. As soon as the king heard this song, he ran out to meet the lute player, took him by the hand and led him into the castle. Here, he cried, is the boy who released me from my prison. And now, my true friend, I will indeed give you your heart's desire. I ask only your trust and love, said the queen, throwing off the hooded cloak and revealing herself. And I beg that you listen to my story. A cry of astonishment rang through the hall. The king stood amazed, then rushed to embrace her. My dear husband, said the queen as she led him to one side. I did receive your message, but I chose to follow another plan. Then the queen told him all that had troubled her about the ransom plan and why she thought it the wiser course to rescue the king instead through her skill as a lute player. Thus, she ended, you return not to a sorry kingdom of debts and people overburdened with taxes, but to a prosperous land and contented subjects. Then the king, knowing she was right, rejoiced in the wisdom and courage of the queen and in gratitude proclaimed a seven-day feast of celebration in her honour to be held throughout the land. The End <laughs>